This academic literacy video takes you through writing your introduction. There are three parts to an introduction in an academic essay. And these three parts are firstly, an introductory sentence. Secondly, a position or thesis statement. And thirdly, an outline of what you're planning to discuss in your essay. We will discuss each of these briefly. What is an introductory sentence? Well, this section of your introduction is going to set the scene for your essay. It's going to tell the reader what your essay is about, and it's going to give a brief taster of the essay. Generally, this sentence is going to contain some of the keywords about the topic. So your reader is introduced to what they can expect to see in this essay. Let's look at an example. This was um, a, an example from an essay on corporal punishment that was set in academic literacy a few years ago. Discipline in South African classrooms has become problematic as teachers feel they are losing control. What do we already know about this essay from this introductory sentence? Well, we know that it's going to be about discipline. We know that it's going to be about South Africa. We know that it is about classrooms in South Africa, so discipline in schools. And we can see further that um, this sentence introduces us to the fact that discipline is problematic and that teachers have no control. So we already know a lot about what this essay is going to cover just from the introductory sentence. The second part of your introduction is going to be your position or thesis statement. This is where you're going to include the position statement that we spoke about in video number three. However, some academic essays do not require you to take a position. In this case, you're going to include a thesis statement where you give more specific information about what the essay is going to be about. So if we compare this to the background or introductory sentence, that will be far more broad. It'll give a sort of brief taster, whereas your thesis statement would state in quite a lot more detail what this essay is going to be about. Let's look at an example from the essays on corporal punishment. Due to overcrowding and a lack of discipline, corporal punishment should be reintroduced to enable teachers to take back control. So obviously, the writer in this case is going to create an essay for corporal punishment. The third thing you should include in your introduction is an outline of what you're planning to discuss in your essay. I suggest that you use your mind map to write this sentence because your mind map clearly states your reasons for taking your position. I'll show you how to do this shortly with the example essay we looked at. You want to start this section with the words this essay will look at or in this essay I will discuss. Now in unit one we asked you not to include the word I in an academic essay. This is the one exception. We cannot deny that you are writing the essay, so in this case it is acceptable to say in this essay I will discuss. But if you feel uncomfortable using I, you can say the first part this essay will look at or this essay will consider or the example that we have further down the slide. In order to investigate this issue, this essay will firstly examine and you will put in what it will examine from your mind map. Secondly, it will look at Again, you refer to your mind map and look at what you think about what you are planning on discussing second, thirdly, etc. Let's look again at the essay question from 2016, which was about free education. Mandela argued that education is the most powerful weapon that can change the world. Mandela also believed that education was the most effective method in combating poverty as it intellectually empowers impoverished individuals. Accordingly, education should be free in a developing nation like South Africa. Critically respond to the above quote and statement. Support your position with reliable research. Now, if you look back at um, the previous video, we looked at the essay plan for this, for this student example. The question, again, just asks you to take a position on free education. 
whether you think it should or it shouldn't be allowed in South Africa, while acknowledging the power that education has. This is the introduction that comes straight out of that student example that is up on ECI for you. Let's break this introduction down section by section. Here in the orange, we can see the background sentence or background information. And the student writes, the argument of Nelson Mandela that education is the most powerful weapon that can change the world is a reality in South African society today. We can see here that this essay already is, we can see it's going to be about South Africa and that it's going to be about education. And the student has quite cleverly included the quote that was asked in the question. We can also see from this first sentence that this essay is going to be something about the power that education holds for people. And the student goes on to say, education empowers the individual with skills and knowledge to survive while providing better opportunities for employment. So here we can see she already creates start of an argument for reasons why people should have employment. This is followed by her position statement, which is now indicated in blue. While education is essential for the success of humankind, making tertiary education free would mean that the state would have to fund it, and this would have a negative impact on the country's already strained economy. So by her position statement, we can see that she acknowledges that education is important for success, but she is going to argue that it shouldn't be free, as it would have a negative impact on the economy. The third section that's now indicated in black discusses exactly what we're going to cover in this essay. And in order to see how the student has done this, let's look at the mind map that she produced. Here's the mind map. This comes from the previous video. We can see her position statement in the bubble in the center and each of her reasons um, at the different arrows. Here is the third part of the introduction. And let's have a look at how she does that. This essay will firstly examine, you can see the number one there. This is our first thing we're going to discuss, necessity of education. Let's look at the corresponding sentence. This essay will firstly examine the necessity of education and its role in the development of the country. Secondly, if we look at our mind map, the number two has just come up. And we can see from her plan, she's going to discuss support of different disadvantaged students. If we go to the introduction, it says, secondly, it will discuss the country's efforts to empower the underprivileged with education through student funding and the pressure that funding is putting on the country's finances. Our third thing she's going to look at, effects of free education on poor citizens. Thirdly, it will examine the effects of free education on the poor and rich citizens. And finally, finally being fourthly, it will discuss the impact of free education on the student-teacher ratio and its influence on the quality of education. So we can see that her mind map fits very carefully with the introduction that she has written. Her position statement is written on her mind map and it's stated in the introduction, as are each of the things she intends to discuss in the essay. Again, because we have four different points that she is planning on discussing, we can expect to see four paragraphs in this essay, plus an introduction and a conclusion. So six paragraphs in total. The next video will take you through how to write a paragraph.